We're here at the waterfront for the Pittsburgh premiere of Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl. Apropos, since the movie was written by a Pittsburgh native, and it was filmed here in Pittsburgh. Let's get ready to talk to the stars and some of the folks behind the scenes. Great evening for Pittsburgh and for me and Earl and the dying girl. Wonderful. Sir, how are you? Good, how are you? Garnered yourself an Emmy nomination. Nomination, yeah. For American Horror Story, the Coven. Coven, yeah. What's the difference between directing horror and directing something like this film? Well, it's completely different. I mean, I think directors, um, I think all directors should try different genres and explore those different themes. And, and stylistically, they all have a different, you have a different approach to each. Um, so they're very, very different. But I did so much horror with American Horror Story that I love that work. Um, it worked with amazing, an amazing cast. But it also allowed me to experiment. That show was so Baroque and so stylized. You could really experiment and try different things. And all that makes its way into a movie like this because then you have to learn how to be still. And, and, and I think in experimenting and, and, and working also on those horrible time constraints of television, you have to do an hour show in 10 days, it's, it's crazy. But you learn how to think fast sometimes and then we had only 23 days on this film. So, um, 24, I forget. Uh, so all those lessons kind of find their way into this, but this is a completely different movie because this was personal to me. And it felt, I, I, it was um, just a deeply personal uh, movie that I wanted to undertake that was written by Jesse Andrews. Um, and, um, but yeah, the beginning of the movie of Me and Earl and Dying Girl is quite playful and quite stylized. Uh, and I think I learned a lot of lessons from American Horror Story, but it's totally, it's, it couldn't be more different. Um, now, you said this movie was personal yeah, yeah. Also. Well, you know, I lost someone very close to me before I read the script, and I, when you're in deep denial, um, like that, I, like I was, um, I didn't really have an out, I didn't know what I was going to do with myself until I read Jesse's beautiful script and I found this beautiful idea buried in the middle of the, uh, of the screenplay that when people die, their lives can continue to unfold. And, um, and it's something that I now truly believe, it, was, it really changed me. For years, you worked as an assistant with Martin Scorsese. Um, what was the most useful thing you garnered for working? So many lessons, uh, but I think one of the most important lessons I think were a love of film history. Um, always look to the past and, and kind of acknowledge and watch all the masters. And it keeps you humble because they've done everything already. Um, and um, and I think he um, he's just incredibly generous in his humility. Are, are two things that uh, I take w I took with me and continue to take with me. And and, and um, you know treating everyone in the crew with a lot of respect and acknowledging their contribution. He treated me like a colleague when I was a PA, which is the lowest level on the film set. So um, so that I think I mean I think we all see the world through our own lenses and he does his way his way and Nora Ephron does it her way and, and so forth but I think that uh, humility uh, is, is, is I think key great sir thank you very much thanks good luck with the film thanks see ya Did. So you're the graphic designer? I kind of, yeah, right? yeah. I, I animated the segments with uh, this other guy, Ed Birch, and we're a couple of local, so that's what how they are. Hmm? Uh, it was a bunch of mixed media. Most of it's stop motion, um, wire puppets, and we'd build around them with paper mache and clay. Yeah. Um, the uh, climax, the moving shapes were felt just stop motion with a camera. We shot live action on 16 millimeter film. We did digital video, uh, sort of. Would you wrap everything in, Maya, or? Um, we, uh, 
not much computer animation like that. Ed would do uh, After Effects, um, and then we had uh, I Stop Motion for just take all of our photos and make them animate. And so, uh, you know, stop motion, it's a lot of building stuff in advance, you know, like building the moose, building the forest, uh, and making it move is almost, you know, the, the, the fast part. Sure. Great, but, uh, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Besides using the bird here as a backdrop, what other uniquely Pittsburgh things came into play in both writing this and in adapting it to the screen? Well, you know, yeah, I think uh, I think the texture, you know, of these of these characters feel very Pittsburgh too. You know, it's not it's not a book that's set in a place like New York or L.A. where, you know, you have people enacting the grandiose a little bit more, you know, and you're sometimes you're not talking to a person, you're talking to a persona. You don't have that as much in Pittsburgh. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's not to not to slam those places, which I love, but uh, you know, yeah, there's a, a realism and authentic authenticity is maybe a little easier to come by here, and that's certainly what I was striving for. Do you think that brought a little bit more uh, depth to your characters? Yeah, more depth, and and also, you know, they're just they're not quite they're not archetypes in the same way. You know, they have a little more specificity, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, yeah, just feel like someone that you grew up with instead of someone that only exists, you know, between the four corners of a screen. Could this movie have happened anywhere else or was it essential to happen here in the world? Well, this movie, yeah, no, no. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess there's a version in, like, Cleveland or a version in, like, Milwaukee. But, you know, that, that, this, it feels very Pittsburgh to me. No, you ready for the tough question? No, no. Here it comes. Emphatically not. You're living in Boston now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So the Bruins play the Penguins. Who are you rooting for? I have the root for the Penguins. Come on. Okay. That's a hard <laughs> question. What are you talking about? No, that's the thing I hate about living in Boston. It's just Boston sports fans. I'm, I'm up against them all the time. It's a nightmare. I became a Celtics fan just because there's no, you know, I didn't have an NBA team. But, yeah, the other three, come on. Yeah, what, what do you take me for? Jesse, thanks. Good hey. luck with the goal. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Describe the process mm -hmm. of how this script found its way to you, and then how you got yourself into it. Well, this script, um, it came through my, my agents and my managers. I was playing Xbox at the time. I know it's very constructive, so life-changing. Was and, this um, Xbox 360 or Xbox One? Yeah, at the time it was Xbox 360. Okay, okay. I couldn't afford a one. Wow. Um, but... Uh, I was um, playing Xbox, and they knew that I was playing Xbox. So when they called me, they was like, RJ, put the controller down. I was like, that's a little creepy, y'all. Did you know that? So I closed my blinds and locked my door to my apartment. <laughs> and they was just like, no, we know you. And I was like, okay, that's true. And so they uh, sent me the script, and I started reading it. And I just, you know, I kept You ever read a book twice? Yeah, it's that good. Like, I read the script over and over again because it was that good. And I forgot to even get back to my game. I died, like, too many times where so they just kicked me offline. And that was bad, but you know, it was just like such a it was the perfect combination that RJ needed, you know. And I couldn't ask for another one. How many days have you spent in Pittsburgh so far? Out of plus shooting and now? No, just post I'm sorry, after the shooting. Oh, after the shoot um just this week. Even though I tried a lot of attempts to get back and they all were like, Okay, I'm going to Pittsburgh this week. No, 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 you got this meeting. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, can I go to Pittsburgh next week? No, because you got this meeting. Wow. Do I get a break anytime soon? Uh-uh. Okay. Okay, so you did your shooting here. You take off for a while, mm -hmm. and then you come back for a week. Differences? It feels like being home. Like, the first time coming to Pittsburgh, I was like, okay, I like this city. It's cool. Then I got addicted to it while we were filming, and now it's just like coming home. I actually love coming back to Pittsburgh. I'm just like, okay, I have to come back in like two weeks. Cool. Yeah. RJ, thanks very much. Good luck Thank with you. Thank, okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I have some good questions for you. Oh! Hammer Films. Right. One of my favorite production companies, because I grew up in the 60s. Mm -hmm. They said they wanted to make you the new Hammer heroine. And you said, no, I don't want to be a screen queen. Why? Um, I, just, I don't 
Christ. Because I think when you, when you, well, I think people, that's a label that other people put on you rather than you put on yourself. And um, I don't really want to label myself or put myself into any specific genre. Oh, okay. Now, it says in an upcoming movie you're going to play a prostitute. Yeah. How do you say no to Scream Queen but say yes to a prostitute? It doesn't really, I mean, again, that's, that's a label and, you know, she's, it's, it's a very, um, it's a different way of, of how sex is shown in America, um, how someone perceives the act of sex, and is it just a transaction or is it something more? And um, I mean, I, I want to challenge myself all the time, so I, I think I've done the whole Scream Queen thing and I want to do something else. Okay. Now, you said in one of your press releases that you lost all your dignity while you were doing the quiet ones. Yeah. Now, how did that experience uh, convey and help you in this film? Um, I mean, I think only the experience with, you know, being on sets and being around crews and, and you know, hitting your mark and blah, blah. But I don't think, um, I don't draw from specific characters to help, especially not a horror film, to help me with this performance. So the script was so strong and Alfonso's direction um, was so helpful and that's all I really needed. What was... Now that this is all wrapped up and done, what was the one crowning moment for you in making this film? Um, I think there's, there's, there's one scene in the movie where it's just one five or six minute scene and it's just all one shot and it just plays out the whole time. There's no cutting into traditional coverage. Um, I'm in the, the foreground, Thomas, Thomas is in the background and, it, and it's just so honest and I think it's the most proud I am of any performance that I've given so far so um, I think that one, one was the, for me was just the most fulfilling. Yeah. Olivia, thank you very much. Thank Good you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye. bye. Hey, how's it going? It's going well, thank you. Everybody says that you totally embody your character great. How so? Well, he's a lot like me, which just makes it easier. Um, I mean, when you read a script and you see so much of yourself in a character, it, like it, you know, it causes you to reflect on your own life, and and you want to really put those parts of yourself out there. And so it's kind of just like pouring myself onto the screen in a way that I've never had before, and I've never been asked to be so emotionally available for a role. I mean, I've used, I'm, I'm used to doing more comedy-based work, and, and this I really had to dig deep in a way that I wasn't even sure I'd be able to, to do, but um, working with Alfonso and then Olivia and RJ, you know, we, we all just kind of brought it out of each other in a really amazing way, and, uh, and so I'm incredibly proud of um, my work, but everyone's work in the film. Okay, now let me ask you, this film has already garnered a couple of accolades, mm -hmm. give me, for you personally, the best case scenario and the worst case scenario to come out of this movie. Yep. I mean, there's no worst case scenario. I already it feels like I've won. You know, I mean, it's amazing. I went to. I was just excited to go to Sundance, mm -hmm. and then everything that happened after that was just so unbelievable. Um, you can't prepare for it, you know. So I'm just trying to make the most of this moment and, and enjoy it. But uh, I just hope that people people come out and see it now that it's out in theaters and. And then, and then on the next week, it's just going to each consecutive week. There's uh, they're expanding more and more theaters. So I just hope that people will come out to see it, and they can have their own personal experience watching it in the way that we had making it. Thomas, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. A gala evening for all concerned here. Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl, made in Pittsburgh, premiered in Pittsburgh. From the waterfront, I'm Fiore.